Good morning, folks. We've got your top science news from beneath our feet out into deep space. We also have a bit of a review at the end for new viewers. We're starting, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on our star were mostly quiet. By comparison to the last few days with eruptive activity, its current calm, despite all the active regions, looks like a warrior in meditation. The active regions are now at the size and apparent complexity that when one shows up, we can't just take comfort in it being early in the sunspot cycle. As of December, we are one year into cycle 25. The quiet part is over. Quick note on the KP index. That run of zeros had a minor health alert go out through our app yesterday. It is ending this morning due to a small shift in the solar wind, bringing back a bit of plasma pressure on the field. More big quakes to add to the two we saw in yesterday's news. Also a five-pointer in Nevada. The two six-pointers yesterday and two the day before have surged Earth back up above average seismicity for the first time in months. And speaking of seismicity, we've got New Zealand's Alpine Fault Risk on the docket this morning, looking at their maximum event, which was thought to be hundreds of years apart between them, about magnitude 7.7. .7. But new events discovered in the record shorten up the timeline and do foretell a faster clock racing towards the next one. Let's get some eye candy before heading fully out into space. Chandra's new data sonification thing is turning into a bit of an obsession for them. Its scientific usefulness stares way up at its visual splendor. The great science involves analyzing the interactions between the population returns or in seeing the progressions of these space features over time. Quick note on het decks up next. It's one of those dark energy surveys that is only looking for normal matter, but Indeed, it's looking in 32,000 different ways. Each optic cable picks up something slightly different, and they all feed back. Not sure about finding dark energy, but they're certainly going to shake up the data on known objects. Up next, we score one for Dr. August Dunning. He has long said, like for years, that sending people to Mars is a one-way coffin death sentence. Turns out, he's likely right. New study confirms how dangerous the proton spikes are there on the red planet lacking magnetic protection. Those proton spikes don't make it too far past our field here at Earth or our atmosphere, but the atmosphere does react to solar storm impacts, mostly by expanding due to the heating from them, and NASA is looking at satellite drag here due to solar activity and are deciding the situation is a bit more complex and a little bit scarier than they had imagined. Coming around the stretch here to focus on the galaxy, turns out Earth is slightly closer to the center of the Milky Way than has been believed. This changes very little in terms of most science, including the galactic chemistry and electromagnetism structure and effects. So when I found this article describing extinctions via traversing the Milky Way, and it neglects to describe solar effects or anything other than the direct effects on Earth, I figured we needed a refresher. Because while the spiral arms present challenges, they do so for the same reason that the galactic current sheet does. The galaxy is set up like any other Taurus jet sheet model. This happens in the lab. This current sheet is the largest feature in the solar system, and it is believed to work everywhere else as well. Within the solar system, the solar wind and photoionization have cleared the dust, and it is very clean, making for a plasma density and solar wind magnetic reversal that hits Earth every 7 to 10 days. It causes minor geomagnetic instability and sometimes a full-blown geostorm activity. Now, this sheet in the galaxy is just on a longer timeline, about 12,000 years apart. It's not so clean like the sun's sheet, and unlike the Earth contending with the sun every day, the sun isn't exactly used to contending with much space weather upon itself. So when the magnetic reversal of the galaxy occurs as plasma density and dust content shift, we actually get two of the known recurrent nova triggers delivered at the exact same time to our star. To reconcile the isotopes and the microtectites and bones of the last disaster, the evidence of the rapid chill thereafter, and the congruency of ancient stories blaming the sun, we need a solar micronova. When you consider that this dirty galactic reversal must occur on a cycle, and it brings the exact two mechanisms of nova known to work, the evidence begins to answer itself. We greatly appreciate all your support and hitting the like button. Pre-order the full story of the ongoing changes and what's coming next at otf.cells.com. Learn a little more about those or a number of other topics at suspiciousobservers.org. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe because we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open.
no fear. Be safe, everyone.